In this video I'll be discussing central lobular pathology on high resolution CT of the chest. The secondary pulmonary lobule is the unit of the lung. It is about two centimetres in maximum diameter and comprises the central bronchus or bronchiole and the pulmonary artery and these are situated in the centre of the secondary pulmonary lobule and it is around this area that airways diseases are expressed on an HRCT. Now on an HRCT you tend not to see the septa unless they are full of blood or fluid and so this imaginary grid is excluded from your vision on an HRCT unless they are pathological. Now the pulmonary vein and the lymphatics run in the septum and so when you have pulmonary venous hypertension or lymphangitis this leads to the so-called septal lines or curly B lines as seen on a chest x-ray. The pulmonary vein is oxygenated blood and the pulmonary artery is deoxygenated blood hence the blue and the red. When you get a central lobular nodule it collects around that bronchovascular bundle in the centre of the secondary pulmonary lobule. Central lobular nodules tend to be rather ill-defined and because of their position with respect to the bronchus and the artery tend to be a fair distance away from a pleural surface. If you then take away the, the grid which is the scepter this is what a central lobular nodule would look like on an HRCT. So you don't ordinarily see the septa unless they are full of fluid or lymph. As the central lobular nodules get bigger, they start to become more ill-defined and start to coalesce until they coalesce with one another pretty much everywhere. The difference between ground glass change and consolidation is where you are unable to see the blood vessel this becomes consolidation otherwise you're dealing with ground glass opacification. This is a condition known as thoracic lymphangiectasis. Essentially you have a communication between the thoracic duct and the bronchus and so lymph fluid pours into the bronchial tree down the right main bronchus, the left main bronchus, into the main bronchi into the bronchioles, into the terminal bronchioles, the alveolar ducts, and they are expressed as central lobular nodules. And this effectively is a whole array of central lobular nodules which are full of lymph fluid. As these nodules start coalescing, they form more of a ground glass change. This demonstrates the central lobular nodules This is the same patient, just illustrating the distribution of nodules throughout the central lobular portions of both lungs. And you can see that uh, in the periphery of the left lower lobe there is a gap between the central lobular nodules and the pleural surface, indicating that each of these nodules starts in the centre of the secondary pulmonary lobule. Later on, these ground glass nodules in the central lobular portions of the secondary pulmonary lobules progress to form this diffuse conglomerate of ground glass attenuation. During normal inspiration, the bronchial tree dilates to allow air into the alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs. And during expiration, the normal physiology is that the bronchus constricts. Now this is further exacerbated in asthma, where you've got mucosal edema causing wall thickening, and the patients often get a wheeze. Well, in the same way, if you have an irreversible fibrosis, demonstrated by this uh, helical brown coiled line, or if you have granulomatous disease in the wall, of the bronchus. During inspiration the airways open as they do normally 
but during expiration the bronchoconstriction is further exacerbated by damage to the wall whether that be temporary or permanent. Now such examples of this are hypersensitivity pneumonitis, sarcoid and Wegen's granulomatosis in the case of reversible granulomatous disease and in the case of irreversible fibrosis in McLeod's or bronchiolitis obliterans, also known as obliterative bronchiolitis. Here is an example of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. So during inspiration, you get areas of air trapping, and these areas of air trapping are exacerbated during expiration. So these fail to release the gas inside them, whereas the rest of the lung, which is grey, becomes even greyer or whiter. And this is normal expiration. The grey bit of the lung is alveolitic, and the black bit of the lung represents air trapping, due to the mechanism I described previously. Note that in an expiratory HRCT, the posterior tracheal membrane falls in, forming this so-called D-shape as opposed to an inspiratory film where it is normal ovoid shape. Now if I look at the air trapping over here in the secondary pulmonary lobule, the arteries that are in the centre of this secondary pulmonary lobule with air trapping are much smaller than they are in the relatively grey lung. And this is because air trapping leads to hypoxia, which leads to vasoconstriction. More central lobular pathology, you can see that there are loosened areas surrounding the pulmonary artery without a definable wall, and this is typical central lobular emphysema. Note also in this patient they have surgical emphysema, a pneumothorax and a large paraceptal bulla. Here's the intercostal drain in the pleural space.